This is AP Pre-Calculus Notes for Topic 1.1, Change in Tandem. This is the first video notes of a long line of notes. We have a long way ahead of us. We only have three units. If I'm looking at my unit guide for everything that we're going to be doing in this class, this is what it looks like as of 2024. It will probably change in the future. This is a video coming from... Brian Passwater's AP Pre-Calculus Curriculum. Again, Brian Passwater is one of the writers of the AP Pre-Calculus Test. So this is a, a great curriculum to make sure that we are getting ready for that test. Let's dive in. So we're talking about a function in this case. A function is that relationship that maps an input to an output. There's a bunch of different ways that you can represent that function. You can represent it with a graph, a table, an equation. Um, but the main thing is that every... Uh, input value is mapped exactly to one and only one output value. It seems like it's a trivial thing to say, but a counterexample to, or a, an example of a non-function is if I go to one, I can have two different heights. You can say, okay, if I have an input of one, what is the height? Is the height one or is it two? And the answer is you don't know. It's a question mark. I Should I do one or should I do two? You can't have two output values. You can't have two of the same input values and get the same height, but you can't do it vice versa. So this is a function. If I have a point here and here, that is a function because if I go to one, there's no question as to where I'm supposed to go. The input is the X. You tell me, you go to two and then I tell you, ah, yes, okay, that has a height of one or has a Y coordinate of one, but you can't have two points directly above each other. So an example of a, another non-function is something like a circle. You say, okay, if I have um, an X coordinate of one, what is the height? And you're like, is it above three or is it down here at like negative 1.5? You don't know. That is an old fashioned definition that we learn all the way back in algebra one, or maybe even earlier. Um, we will eventually learn that that is not necessarily true. There's this thing known as the vertical line test. You draw a vertical line. If it passes through the function more than once, once, twice, then it's not supposed to be a function. We will find that there is a way to actually get around that. But for now, we're going to go ahead and assume that you can only have one output value, one height, whenever I give you an X input. So the set of input values for the function, that's called your domain. Everything that you're allowed to plug in is in the domain. So if I have a quick little function, I'm going to do a sketch down here that I'm going to erase very shortly. If my domain goes from four, let's extend this to, to negative three and say that that definitely ends here, definitely ends here. Negative four is not in the domain because if I plug in negative four, I don't know what height to go to. But if I plug in negative three, I know I go up to this height. If I go plug in negative one, I know to go to this height. What are you allowed to do for the X axis? That is every number that is in the domain. And that is represented by the independent variable known as X. So the independent pen, I can't spell variable also known as the X variable. And then everything that we're allowed to come out is called, um, it's a member of the range, it's an output value of the range. So this is asking, okay, what possible heights could I give? I can never, on, in this one example, I can never get a height up here at four because that doesn't intersect the function anywhere. I can get a height of three, well, maybe a little bit less than three. I can definitely get a height of two because two intersects the function right there. Two is an allowed height. Anything that's down here clearly doesn't intersect my function up here. So these values down here are not in the range. And those are known as the dependent variables because it depends on what you choose for X. So the dependent variables, those are known as your, your Y variable, right? So let's go ahead and actually erase this. I've done, I'm done explaining all the stuff up here. So our instructions, we need to just quickly sketch a graph only between negative four and four. So that's everything on here. Let's go ahead and erase that as well um, for the function rules below. So the function of F will have each input value and then add one. So we get to choose whatever you want. You want to choose a one, you want to choose a two. I prefer to choose zero because it's really easy to take half of zero. Half of zero is zero. That was the first step. Each input value is halved. And then after I take half of zero, I add one. Half of zero is zero and I add one and I get one. And you can choose to choose one and two and three and four, etc. I am going to choose two because it's really easy for me to take half of two. And this is the whole point of a function. You can choose anything that you want. I choose to choose something that is something easy. I choose to pick something that's easy. Half of two is one, and then I add one, and that means two has a height or a y output value of two. And then I can say, okay, what happens if I choose four? Half of four is two, and then I add one after that, and four comes up here to a height of three. So I can come up here to three, and you can see that there's this trend line that seems to be linear. And in fact, if I go ahead and maybe I'm going to choose negative two. Half of negative two is negative one. If I add one to that, I go back to zero, and I'm on this x-axis. And you can see, oh, Mr. Sindel, I know slope. Slope is you go right one, up two, or you can go left two, down one. You can keep doing this. You can do the, the little staircase, right? I go down one, left two, down one, left two. Okay, this point must be on the... Um, 
on the graph, right? Negative four has a height of negative one. Let's check, half of negative four is negative two. I add one, I get up here to a height of negative one that is indeed on the graph. And in fact, we didn't have to restrict ourselves to just even numbers. I could have chosen one. If I take half of one, half of one is 0.5, and then I add one, I get 1.5. So technically, I'm gonna do this in a different color because this is kind of a, a hard point to graph. This point is on the graph. And technically, if I, if I zoom in here, there's an infinite number of points in between here and those infinite number of points, if I graph them correctly, they look like a line, and that is the solution. That's why we have this, and again, my, my line is not very good, is it? Um, that, that's my attempt at drawing uh, a line that goes through those points. I think maybe if I, yeah, let me try to do that a little bit better. I think I need to start down here. There's technology working. I think this point down here needed to be a little bit higher to right about there. That's a better point. This line is made up of every solution that follows this rule. Every single point on this line is a solution, and that is what defines that line. You use these points to just start building that line. I think I've kicked that dead horse long enough. Let's talk about part B. Um, let's go ahead and graph all these points and see what happens. So uh, I go negative four down one, so negative one goes up to two, zero goes to three, so that means they don't move left and right and just head straight up. Two goes to three as well, four goes to one, all right, we've graphed it. So are these functions? And the answer is yes, they are functions because no matter what you choose, like you get to choose whatever you want. Do you choose a negative four? Well, I'll tell you what the height is. You choose a zero, I'll tell you what the height is. If I somehow had a point right here and you told me, ah, choose a two, I wouldn't know to go here or maybe to come up here. I'm not sure. So this is a function because every single uh, input that value that you choose has exactly one output value. I'm again, using that definition of what it means to be a function. All right, so these are important. Um, these are gonna come back over and over again throughout this entire first unit, the difference between increasing, decreasing, concave up and concave down. So again, there is this complicated way of saying it. And again, you can kind of interpret this, assume that this X value A is small, assume this X value B is bigger, then the height at A should be smaller than the height at B. Yes, that is the technical way of doing it. But in English, we read from left to right. As long as you move from the left to the right, are you going up? If so, you're increasing. As you're moving from the left to the right, are you going down? If so, you are decreasing. That's a, another way to define that. And then concave up and concave down is a little bit hard to define because it's talking about the, the rate of change is increasing. While this is something that we are gonna come back to over and over and it's a good way to make tricky multiple choice questions, the simple way to tell if you're concave up is are you a rainbow or are you a smiley face? If you are a smiley face, you are concave up. You can maybe draw some, some eyes on your hair. Here's my, my eye on my function. I can do another eyeball over here and okay do you guys see the the smiley face now maybe i can draw a nose or something it's a smiley face if you're a smiley face you are concave up if it is a rainbow here's me doing um red i'll do some colors here red and orange and blue and there's the rainbow you guys can see my pretty rainbow if you're a rainbow you are concave down generally speaking they use this word rate of change i want to talk about that technical vocabulary now this rate of change every single time that you see the word rate of change i always always cross this off and i just in my mind's eye i think the word slope is the slope increasing or is the slope decreasing so right here i had a slope that was like negative one and then right here i have like a slope of negative a half and then i have a slope of zero and then i have like a slope of maybe one over here you can tell that the slope is slowly starting to come up and i'm going to use this idea this metaphor of like you're you're trying to fly a plane and you're maybe the ground is right here you don't want to crash the plane so you're constantly trying to pull up the plane you're just trying to pull it up pull up the plane you're holding on to that steering wheel or whatever you have in a plane and you're trying to pull up you're pulling up the slope you're, you're increasing the slope and when I have concave down, you don't really have control over it. Um, maybe you have been launched from a, a cannon and you're trying to fly through there and you're trying, to, you're trying to crash down. This gravity is constantly pulling you down. It's constantly pulling you down. So the slope, while it was initially steep, it eventually has a slope of zero and eventually comes down and has more of a negative slope because the slope has been decreasing this entire time until you get to like nearly a, a negative infinity, almost slope. All right, so concave up, concave down, good. Increasing, decreasing are typically easy for most students when they're beginning out. Let's go ahead and do an example. So in example two, we have the graph above. I just need to talk about the open intervals where H is increasing, decreasing, concave up using those words. So I particularly like using a, a highlighter to say where I'm uh, increasing. So again, reading from left to right, am I going up? No, I'm going down. So I'm gonna highlight that one. Uh, in the purple color and say, okay, that one's concave down, or not concave down, this one is, uh, in. it's decreasing. <laughs> There's the right word that I'm looking for. So I'll say over here, this is, I'm gonna abbreviate, that's decreasing for my purple color. And then you can see, oh, suddenly you are suddenly going up as I move from uh, left to right in the graph. So I'm moving all the way up to this interval. So I can say all of that, switch our highlighter color is green. All of that is increasing. So I'm gonna do 
um, a green increasing for that interval. And then all of a sudden I'm starting to go down and I keep going down. I know this is a, what's known as a sharp corner and it keeps going down till right about four. So this entire interval right here is where I am decreasing. So let's go ahead and highlight that in my, my purple color and say I'm decreasing on this entire interval. And I'll, I'll label that as well. This is decreasing on this interval. And then all of a sudden I'm starting to go up and I'm going up all the way to this end point of seven. And I'll go ahead and highlight that one in green to say that I am increasing for that interval right there. So I'll label that increasing. So I've analyzed the increasing and decreasing. Those are those words. I want to also analyze where I'm concave up, concave down. And sometimes I'll have a concavity that is zero. It's neither concave up nor concave down. So whenever you have a straight line, that is no concavity. You need some sort of curvature in order to have concavity. Everything right here looks like a rainbow. Therefore, I'm concave down. The way that I annotate that in my notes is I just do an arrow and I say, okay, that one's concave down. And then you can see the concavity switches right here. It used to be concave down, being pulled down. You can think of gravity pulling it down. And all of a sudden, it's being pulled up. You're trying to not crash the plane. You're being pulled up, pulled up. Everything in this interval right here is concave up. It looks like a, a smiley face. So I know that I'm concave down in this interval between the x-coordinates of negative 2 to positive 2, and then I'm concave up in between the x-coordinates 2 to 7. So now I'm ready to answer these questions. Where is my function h increasing? It's increasing wherever I'm green. So the way that we say that is between negative 2 to 0. And that's just this first green spot. What about this one? This one is from 4 to 7. So I can say also and 4 to 7. So I want to talk really quickly about notation. If I'm being super technical, this word is incorrect. Technically, I should have this be a, a union. So you might see uh, Ted Gott makes the video, or not the video solutions, but the static answer key solutions um, that you might see available online. This uh, is this shows up a lot, but it's confusing for most students and it doesn't really matter that much. So I just say those are the two intervals and I know I'm mathematically incorrect by saying that, but that's the notation that I prefer to use. I, I know that I'm incorrect. All right, where's H decreasing? It's decreasing wherever I have these purples. So it's between negative four and two, between zero and four. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that. It's between negative four and negative two. That's the first interval. And there's also this interval from zero to four. And I'm noticing that there's probably students that are asking, why are you doing a parenthesis? I know sometimes you do a square bracket. A square bracket is when you are allowed to be equal to negative four. Are, am I allowed to be equal to negative four? Not exactly. I, I can't say I'm equal to negative four. I can't say it's decreasing at a single point. You need more values. You need a, a range of values to tell that I'm decreasing. So typically speaking, decreasing is never going to have a hard square bracket on that. Uh, where am I concave up? I'm concave up where I ever have a, a smiley face. So it's in between this two and seven. So I'll just say that in between two and seven. That's the only time that I have positive concavity. I already said over here, whenever you have a straight line, that is no concavity whatsoever. All right, where am I mixing things? Where am I both increasing and concave down? Well, increasing, I'm talking about those two green intervals, and I'm concave down only in this entire interval right here. So specifically, it's only this interval right here between negative two and zero. So over here, I'm going to say between negative two and zero. Where am I decreasing and concave up? Well, I'm decreasing in this interval and this interval, and I'm concave up only between this interval. That overlap is specifically just between two and four. So between two and four. Again, whenever you're giving these ranges down here, these are always going to be X numbers. They're gonna they're, never give heights, never give Y values because you will get mixed up. All right, and then this is gonna be the end of the notes with example three. It is kind of difficult to do, and I'm gonna go through it nice and slow to make sure that we all understand how to do this. We need to build a custom graph that is increasing between negative four and one and five and seven, decreasing between one and five. And additionally, I need to be concave up between three and six and concave down between negative four and three and six to seven. There's a lot to analyze there. And maybe you are that excellent graphical student that you can just do this freehand. I could if I spent some time, but I might make mistakes and I'll have to erase it, which is totally fine. Don't be afraid of mistakes. But to make sure that I do it as correctly as possible, I'm going to mark out all of these intervals and make sure I know what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and say I'll have a green interval with a dashed line for my increasing. So I'm increasing from negative four all the way through one. That's my increasing. And I'll, I'll write a note to myself that this is uh, increasing in this interval. And then I also am going to be increasing between five and seven. So let me do a dashed line between five and seven. And I need to move that over a little bit so it's actually on seven. That's also an increasing window. And I need to be decreasing between one and five. And I can clearly see one and five is in there. So I'll go ahead and write this is going to be uh, decreasing 
in that window. Okay, so that's all the increasing, decreasing. What about the concavity? Concavity, I have concave up between three and six. So I'm gonna do a different colored dashed line for three and six. So I'm gonna say between three and six, and I'll write these uh, underneath. I need to move that over a little bit. It's not exactly three, six, right there. I should be uh, concave down. So I'm gonna say, uh, it's kind of hard to see here. Maybe I'll do this and I'll say I'm concave down on that interval. And I should be concave up between negative four to three. So let me do another dash line between negative four all the way to three. So actually I can just, I don't need another dash line. I can just say all of this should be concave up. And then I also need to be concave up uh, for this last little bit that also needs to be concave up. All right, so I have everything ready to go. Let's see if I can actually try this on the first try. All right, so uh, I need to be increasing and concave up. So increasing and concave up, I'm just gonna randomly pick a point right here. If I'm increasing, I need to be going up. And if I'm concave up, I know that it needs to be some sort of smiley face. So I think I'm gonna be coming um, slowly up like this, concave up, and then what happens right here? So now I've hit this boundary point. This boundary point means I need to be decreasing now. But notice I'm still supposed to be concave up. So I need to be concave up. Uh, that means I'm gonna have to have some sort of sharp corner there. And I'm still concave up, but now I'm going down. You can see that if I were to continue this line all the way, it would look like um, a smiley face. So I'm still concave up. Okay, I've hit another line. Now what am I supposed to do here? Now I'm supposed to be concave down while being decreasing. So concave down while decreasing is gonna be something like that. So now it's gonna switch to something like, oh, I don't wanna go down steep like that too fast. So I'm gonna be concave down. And then, okay, I just r randomly happened to hit the X intercept. I didn't intend to do that. And now um, in this green interval, I should be increasing while still being concave down. So that means if I'm increasing concave down, it's something like that. So let's go ahead and do another sharp corner and come up like that. And now I've hit concave up. So I need to be concave up and increasing. We've already seen that over here. Concave up and increasing is something like that. So I can go ahead and finish off my graph and say, okay, I have my graph all the way from negative four to seven with all of the, the correct rules. I'll put a point here to remind myself those are connected. And I have finished example three and therefore I have finished the notes for topic 1.1. There's the back page, there's the front page. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys later.